What is up guys and welcome back to SP Vids. On today's video I'm going to be on the SP404SX again. I've been on this machine a lot recently but I'm just absolutely loving it at the moment. And in this video I'm going to make a full beat but I'm going to use Resample. Resample isn't something that I use very much for making beats. I tend to either use the pattern sequencer or just play my beats out live and record them. That's how I usually get the sound out of this. But I've decided in this video I'm going to push myself a little bit and try and make an actual full lo-fi beat with Resample and see what sort of sound I can get. So I'm really looking forward to the challenge of this one. I pretty much know how to do it. I know how to use Resample to make beats, but there may be a few things I'm not very good at, which obviously I'm gonna work around in this particular video. But yeah, super looking forward to the challenge. So let's get into this one and make a full resampled lo-fi beat with the 404SX. Right guys, here we are at the SP404SX. And just to point out, I haven't got my dial on this uh, this part here and that's because I've set the level for the SP while I'm recording I don't want it to clip so that's so I don't accidentally turn the volume knob so that's the reason that's not on there there's no technical reason or specific reason it's just to do with me recording okay so I've got these chops I really like the sound of these and we're gonna work out how to make a resampled loop and then other parts as well to make a full beat so these are the chops that I've got That's the loop that I want to make. I've already come up with that pattern. I've got some drum sounds here. And stay tuned because I've got Lo-Fi Drums Volume 4 coming out very, very soon, guys. So there will be a huge pack of new Lo-Fi Drums coming out. This is going to be a big pack, so uh, make sure you stay tuned for my announcements on that one. Um, but for now, I don't know what these drums are. They're not from any of my packs. Um, I'm just going to slap these on anyway because I like the sound of them. They fit well with the sample as well, so that's the main thing for this beat. So the first thing I need to do is get those three chops in that pattern that I just showed you onto one pad. Now you can run into issues with this with resample because there's a polyphony, which basically means there's a limit. And when you're resampling, depending on whether you're using mono or stereo samples, that changes. I think it's two pads for stereo and four for mono. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Um, you can correct me in the comments if I've got that wrong, but I seem to remember from checking so many times in the manual that that is the uh, the definitely that that is definitely the right numbers for it. So I'm going to try and resample this to pad six, and we're going to see how things go. Now, hopefully, it doesn't cut out, but we'll see what happens. So resample record six, and actually, sorry, before I do start that, one thing that I do want to point out is the gap between one and two is very difficult to get correct with these samples. So let me just try and show you. There's a slight jump, and I think probably will end up being covered by the drums and all the effects so I'm not going to stress too much about it because this video is more about sort of showing you guys how to make a resample beat through me making a resample beat. Uh, so I'm not trying to make a masterpiece here, I just want to show you guys the techniques. So I'm going to try the best I can to get that transition good but uh, we'll see what happens. So that's just a little, uh, a little disclaimer. Okay, I got the second one really good. The first one was a little bit off, but I'm happy with it. So let's see what that loop now sounds like. Okay, they're a bit jumpy, uh, but like I say, I don't want to go back and make this a masterpiece. It's going to be okay for this example. So that's the main loop that we want for the beat and now I want to get some drums over the top of that. Now, before I do some drums actually, I want to apply some effects. So I'm going to add MFX 16 <laughs> just because it's the best effect on the SP. Ah yes, listen to that. That just sounds magic straight away with that on. So I'm going to resample that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go around the loop just over once so that it gives me a bit of space for trimming. It gives you a bit of continuity. You don't want to be right down to a point where you start losing the end of your loop because you're having to trim. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense, but I'll show you what I mean here. And hopefully it does because this is actually a really useful tip for resampling. So let's go ahead and resample that with that effect. On to seven.
Okay, there is a slight gap actually, which is unfortunate, but we'll just leave that as it is. We can do the trimming later on. So now it's time to delete the previous one to make a bit more bank space. So delete six, delete, and I'm gonna exchange seven to six. So just deleted what was on six, that was recorded to seven with the effect, and then move seven to six. So not complicated. Right, and I'm gonna add another effect to this. I'm gonna add bit crash, even though that's such a strange name for the effect that I always think it's bit crush or bit crunch, but bit crash. Yeah, that sounds nice. Okay, we'll resample that as well. And this is just me showing you how you can do this, guys. You can go ahead and use whatever effects you want. You can go mad and use five, six, seven, eight effects, or you can use no effects. It's up to you. Okay, so that ended up being quite subtle on that, only a little bit of that sort of old school bit crash vibe on it uh, didn't go crazy, so we can delete 6 now again, uh, delete 6, and let's exchange 7 to 6 again. So I'm just building up the layers and then deleting the old ones so that I can keep the space on the pads because obviously we've only got 12 pads. It's quite a destructive workflow this, and hopefully it doesn't backfire, but, uh, but yeah, it should be good. Okay, I like the sound of that now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start layering some drums on this. So I'm gonna start off with the hi-hat. I think the hi-hat's the easiest one to do first because then you can use it for everything else for the timing. Uh, again, it's up to you what process you wanna use. It's entirely personal, really. So I'm gonna go ahead and layer this hi-hat over the top and I'm gonna do it onto pad seven again. And let's see how this goes. Okay, not very well. It's tricky getting the timing of the hi-hat right without accounting, so I'm gonna go ahead and try that again. Okay, there's all sorts of crazy swing and then not swing and swing going on in that one, but we've got this now. And now I need to keep six because I want to make a variation. So six has to stay now. This is getting tricky because we're really running out of bank space. So I'm gonna move six to four, uh, function exchange six to four. Of course, we could go into another bank if we wanted to, so we'll see how we get on. Uh, and now I'll move seven to six. Okay, so that's good. We've still got seven and eight, and we've still got that backup of four, which I wanna to use to make a variation with the drums. So. Onto seven now, and I'm gonna do the snare next. So let's resample this. Cool, that's that done. Same process again, delete and move. And I'll go straight into doing the kick as well. So this is another one which is difficult because you want to get that kick on right at the start of the uh, of the loop. So we you got to get the timing as good as you can. It might take a few attempts. Hopefully I get lucky, but we'll see now. Oh damn it! That was going so well, and then I absolutely messed up the kicks in the second part of the loop. So let's try that again. That was sounding so nice. I got a really good swing on the kick then. Let's try it again and hope we can get it again. Okay, cool. I got it again, I think. So I'm pretty happy with the sound of that actually. Okay, so we've got a loop, and now hopefully we can trim that down. So 
I've just deleted that other pad. Sorry, I've I've lost myself. I've lost my trail of thought there. I just deleted pad six, and I'm going to go ahead and exchange that across again. I was starting to think ahead too much and forgot I was actually making a video then. <laughs> so we've got that loop. We've got the drums on it. That's fine. We still need to trim it, but we can do that later. Right now, I want to make this variation. So this is going to be annoying to be honest. But what I'm going to do is use pad four which i've got as the backup and i'm going to make a pause at the start of the beat so let's resample record okay that's good And that's where it's going to come in like that. So let's get the other stuff layered now. Uh, okay, let's see the snare next. No, I got that wrong. Let's try it again. That's good. Okay, let's delete seven and move eight to seven. Perfect. So we just need to do the kick now and we'll do that onto eight. We resample yet again. Okay, that's turned out to be quite an extreme variation. I think I did a completely different pattern there for the kick. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, hopefully this is showing you guys the, the process of resampling, etc., and building a full beat. So we've got two full parts now. We've got a loop and then we've got a pause. Cool, that's sounding loose as hell. There's little gaps at the end and it's all over the place, but somehow I was getting so much swing on that kick and I think it's because it's got a bit of silence before it. It's only a tiny little amount, but it was allowing me to get so much swing on the beat, on the uh, on the kick anyway. Okay, so let's get the trimming done on these now and I'm gonna get the ends tidied up so that hopefully this can loop around a little bit better. So I'm gonna try and use mark and let's go ahead and hit mark as soon as it starts and I'm gonna try and hit mark again at the end. Sounded like there's still a gap, so I'll trim a bit off. I'll just guess at this point, it's probably gonna be somewhere between 10 and 20 that needs trimming off, I think. But let's have a go at 13. Unlucky for some, hopefully not for me. Oh! Wow, I got really lucky with that. That sounds nice. It's got a slight, slight pause, but it sounds nice. So I'm going to do the same for seven. I'm going to knock 13 off. That should work technically, I think. If the laws of uh, lo-fi treat me right, that should work for that pad as well. So let's try seven now and see what that sounds like. It didn't quite work for that one, so I'm going to need a little bit more off that, I think, about, let's say, 20. And this is the tedious part, because you keep having to listen through the full loop. Uh, it's a bit annoying, but we're almost there now, so we, the end's in sight, and that's good enough motivation to uh, for me to keep going and, and finish this off.
Okay, that's pretty good actually. So we've got both of those sorted now. Now I could go a lot further with this. I could make other variations if I wanted to. You could kind of, once you've finished with these, it, once you've got proper ones, uh, proper loops sorted out, you could move those onto another bank and just free up some more space. Kind of like move them into a, a completed area. Um, but for the sake of this one, I'm only going to do the two parts. And what I'm going to do now is just hit some effects on this. So maybe we'll try some compression. Okay, that's kind of ruining the dynamic a little bit, I think that. So I'm just going to try maybe a bit of isolation instead. Uh, we could actually do a bit more MFX 14 because I don't think you can hear it that much. Okay guys, I think I'm done with that beat. That took a little longer than I was expecting. It is quite fiddly using the resample, but you can get some loose as hell vibes. That's what I'm figuring out from that straight away there. I was figuring out some really, really nice vibes. It was so loose. The transitions were a bit off between the two different pads. That's something I'd probably have to go back and try and tidy up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, once you've got those four pads, you could actually then resample those onto another pad in the order that you want to, to create the four beat as well. So that's it for this one. I just wanted to show you guys the workflow of how I would make resampled beats. It's a lot easier with an external unit. Uh, you can just throw stuff into it and record it back in, and then you're not worrying about the polyphony of anything. Uh, but for just being inside the box, I think that's come out pretty nicely. Yeah, and my best piece of advice really for resampling is don't trim until you're absolutely sure that you've got the loop that you want because you can't undo it. And it's really annoying when you want to add an, say you've, you've finished the loop, you want to trim it and you trim it and then you want to add an effect all of a sudden. And then all of a sudden you've got no play at the end to be able to trim it again because you've already cut it off. And then you record it onto a new pad and it's super difficult trying to get the loop perfect again. So be really careful of that. Leave yourself the start of the loop again to trim off so that you can get that trim point perfect. I hope that makes sense. That's a killer tip for resampling. So yeah, please, please leave a comment if you enjoyed this video. I know this is quite an informal setup for me. Uh, it was quite nice to do it though. It's a different vibe. And also leave any comments if you've got any tips for everyone about resampling. And yeah, keep making beats guys. I'll be back with more content very, very soon. Peace. Peace. But my shit's still banging in your